People say the world is dying. Once thriving populations now lie decimated by plague and disease. And if that wasn't was enough, monsters called shades, shades now roam the land as well, threatening, threatening our very violence. lives. But I can't let any of that distract me. But that's of no consequence to me. My daughter is sick. My sister is sick. And my only concern is to give her a better life. And my only goal is to ensure that the two of us survive. I try my best, but I'm only one man. I'm hard like that. It's not easy for a pair of kids to live on their own. So the kindness of the villagers has meant much. But the villagers have been kind to us. Nothing will stop me. I will fight for Yona until the end. And despite everything, somehow I feel like we're gonna be okay. Until the very end. We have to be. There's no other choice. So it finally dropped. Due to external factors, I can't do full coverage of the game at the moment, but I do want to at least talk about my first impressions of Nier Replicant and how it compares to Nier Gestalt. I can't dip too far into the game, so I'll cover my thoughts of what I played up until I encountered Kaine. Why am I doing this video? I love the Nier series. Nier Automata was my game of the year for 2017, and it came out in January. And I need to get my thoughts out in this video while the game is still fresh, because I don't want to look at the discourse I've been predicting would result from Replicant, and know that I didn't throw my own stuff out there for everyone to deal with. I should explain how I'm viewing Replicant as a remake, remaster, or whatever you want to designate it as. I'm worried people are going to compare Replicant to something like Bluepoint's Demon Souls remake, and I don't want to see a pissing contest over production values and technical shortcomings. That's not how I'm looking at it. I see Replicant as something more like Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, or the Destroy All Humans remake. A title that strives to recreate the same experience as the original version, but also attempts to either improve on mechanics that have aged in the span of time since the initial release, or introduce a change in mechanics that is slight, but noticeable, and even appreciable to someone who's played the original version. I'm playing the PC port, by the way. I heard that it had issues, and when I first ran the game, it would chug and crash a couple times, but I was rendering a video in Vegas during that session, so that might have sapped some resources away from the game. When I ran it again without any other big programs in the background, it ran fine. I'd see some slowdown in like a few instances, but I didn't have any problems with performance on my end. I'm no expert on graphics or performance, so I won't scrutinize the game too hard on those fronts. I'm more concerned with the new stuff that Replicant brings to the table. A whole new experience for Western players with a younger version of the protagonist, a revamped combat system, and a fresh coat of paint. I'll start with the visuals. When I stepped out of New Year's house and saw the village, I screamed at my monitor. This looks gorgeous. This lighting looks so warm and bright and not blown out with bloom like a 6th gen game. This is the kind of town trad posters gush about. I'll say this about the models though. Although I'm pretty sure the character models have all been reworked to some extent, I think the environments are essentially the same as Gestalt, but with better lighting and textures. I'm running the game at mid to high-ish settings, and even then, I could tell some textures are pretty low res. I like the new art style. It's pretty close to the original, but I think Kainu's face is a little squashed. The one nit I have to pick is that having a younger character be the protagonist made it so that Nier and Yona looked virtually identical to me in their winter outfit in the tutorial chapter. Are they... are they gonna come back for me? Don't worry, Yona. I won't let those things anywhere near you. The blood that spills in combat looks good, and they kind of up the ante a bit by having Nier create bloody footprints for a while if he steps onto a corpse. The music has also been reworked, and while I can't recall the original soundtrack perfectly from memory, I can definitely tell that tracks have been altered in Replicant.
The sound mixing is really good in Replicant. There were some lines between Nier and Weiss that got drowned out in the heat of combat in Gestalt, and Replicant made it very clear that when Weiss recalls how to do Dark Blast, there's a filter in his voice to signify his memory temporarily returning. Did you just suck the blood out of those things? What's going on, Weiss? Uh, did you just suck the blood out of those things? Okay. Also, I'm genuinely impressed that Replicant went the extra mile to voice virtually every line in the game. Every NPC I've come upon will read out their lines. Not even Automata had that as a feature. Young people always drive themselves forward, but it's important to take a step back and look around sometimes. A port town like this is a real jewel. If you can't find it here, you don't need it. There's a post office in the center of town that manages to send letters and packages all over the world. We've also got lots of fish, which are in pretty high demand. Lots of ladies, too. But they're not as sought after. <laughs> Aside from the visuals and sound, the other big change between versions is how Nier himself controls. I'm not even going into combat at the moment, but just like, basic character movement between brother and father is like night and day. Father Nier can run at a decent pace, but the game world is so spread out that traversal kind of becomes something you tune out as you play the game. You become so familiar with the game's world that you just go into autopilot when you move from place to place. If you've ever zoned out while driving and found yourself surprised that on a subconscious level you knew where to get to and how to do it safely, it's kind of like that. When it comes to Brother Nier, the best way to describe him is fleet-footed. If you walk forward for a set amount of time, Nier will do a Devil May Cry style speed-up effect and break into a full-on sprint. What's cool is that, if you press a dodge button and hold it down, Nier will roll into the same sprint without having to wait for the speed-up effect. It's very similar to how holding the dodge button in Nier Automata would cause the androids to go into a brief speed burst with their dash. This is a godsend for the early game when you can't ride boars yet. I didn't compare the versions against each other, but I'm pretty sure I can cover a lot more ground in the open world in a lot less time with Brother Nier than Father Nier. Here's a weird change that I didn't know I even wanted until I played Replicant. Walking indoors with Father Nier can feel awkward and stiff because he only goes at a set pace and he walks like Frankenstein. Brother Nier can adjust his walk speed so he can do the virgin walk or trot around indoors. Although both characters can hop indoors, Brother's small stature makes it look a lot less awkward. Item gathering has been optimized now. Instead of freezing the game to tell you when you've picked up another restorative, the game will now have the item hover over Nier's head to indicate what he's gathered. He still does a ruffling around animation, but it doesn't feel as slow as in Gestalt. Okay, now we're going to talk about combat. If you haven't played it yet, the best way to describe Nier Gestalt's combat is serviceable. Just like Nier himself, it gets the job done. You're not coming to Gestalt for its combat. It's mid, but it's not bad. I know that everyone has their own idea of what is and isn't good combat, so I'll explain how I look at hack and slash gameplay. If I'm playing such a game, and after 20 minutes, I feel like I'd rather be playing EOE, Eve of Extinction, then the game's combat is bad. Gestalt passes an EOE test, whereas Devil's Hunt flunked it and had to retake a semester. Replicant tested out of the entire class and got course credit. The combat gets described as character action, and I don't entirely agree with that designation. It gets labeled as such because the attack animations are flashy and flow into one another. X or square for light attack, and Y or triangle for heavy attack. The thing is, the combo pool is pretty shallow, and the way it varies itself is whether you tap a button or hold it down. The shoulder buttons allow you to map various actions based on your preferences. By default, the left and right triggers are mapped for block and dodge, respectively. If you block an attack at the right time, you can parry that attack and follow it up with a counterattack. If you press the left stick in the direction of a given enemy and press dodge, you can sidestep around them and avoid an attack. Replicant carries over Gestalt's control scheme for the most part, but with some notable changes. 
Replicate now has target lock on by pressing in the right stick on a highlighted enemy, and can shift focus on multiple targets by flicking the right stick. Pretty standard targeting system in a third person action game, and it's what Platinum Games post Bayonetta have employed. It definitely offers a level of precision and combat that Gestalt lacked. In Gestalt, Y or Triangle only ever had one function, which was the guard break. If you press it in the air, it could also double as a ground slam attack. In Replicant, Y or Triangle is treated more as a heavy attack. Its combo pool is still shallower than X or Square, but you can chain a couple of combos with consecutive Y presses. Brother Nier also has new attacks that follow up from a sprint for both light and heavy attacks. Parrying returns, but now you have the option of a light or heavy parry. The light version does a sweeping attack that catches any enemies within its hitbox. The heavy version launches a target up into the air for more combo setup. What I love about parrying and replicant is that the window for it is pretty broad, and Brother Nier's responsiveness to player input is practically instantaneous, whereas Father Nier had a slight delay in all of his inputs. It took me a while to get the timing down in Gestalt, and some enemies had attacks that I just couldn't catch. The visual flourish to indicate when a parry has connected is also better conveyed in Replicant, with a slight slowdown and a big flash of a red slash to contrast the black and yellow of the shades. Replicant also tweaked sidestepping. It still works the same way, but now the effect is much more noticeable. Instead of near rolling around an enemy, he dashes behind them in a way that's visually similar to Virgil's side roll after landing an attack in DMC5. Finishing blows have been reworked. In Gestalt, you have to press the block button and either light or heavy attack depending on which control scheme you selected in the options. In Replicant, it's mapped to the action button, and instead of near doing a downward stab in Gestalt, you still hack away at the downed enemy. Kinda gruesome, but I think it adds to the age gap between brother and father near. A grown man could easily finish off an enemy with a simple motion, but a younger man might not have enough strength to do that and may require more hits to finish the job. Magic also got some work done in Replicant. In Gestalt, Dark Blast would cause Nier to slightly slow his running pace, and the bullets would shoot at what I viewed as a pretty leisurely pace. In Replicant, Dark Blast doesn't affect Nier's running speed, which gives the game a similar shmuppy kind of range attack that the pods would give the androids in Nier Automata. It's not nearly as fast as pod fire, but it does definitely resemble Automata's run and gunning. In Gestalt, Dark Hand would require Nier to stand still if he was charging up multiple hands, but Replicant allows Nier to move around while he's charging up the spell. Dark Execution works more or less the same, but I like Replicant's method of indicating how many directions a spell will cover over Gestalt, as it doesn't surround Nier in a circle of red cones. Dark Lance has an interesting change. In Gestalt, you could free aim Dark Lance, and the game slows down to give you time to line up and charge your shots. In Replicant, the game no longer slows down for Dark Lance, but the spell will now snap to the target that's within Nier's reticle, and can shift to other targets similar to target locking. Although all of these changes make it seem like the game is now more character action, I still disagree with that designation for a few reasons. One of them doesn't even have to do with Nier, but with his enemies. Most character action games provide clear signals to the player that an enemy is initiating an attack. It can be as subtle as a very obvious wind-up animation, or as overt as the enemy flashing before an attack, like in a Platinum game. Enemy types in these kinds of games will have a variety of designs to make them stand out from one another to the player's eye in the heat of combat. The shades do have obvious wind-up animations for their attacks, but because of their formlessness and the fact that they all share the same color scheme, it can be hard to track even the most obvious attacks from one enemy because they'll end up having tunnel vision focusing on the wind-up of another enemy in the hopes of setting up a parry. You know how zebra stripes are designed to confuse predators when they huddle up and break up the contours of their shapes? It's kind of the same effect with shades in both games. What I've come to learn about combat in Replicant is that sidestepping is most effective in big crowd fights because Nier can schmoove his way past the crowds and avoid attacks that would be hard to read, and blocking is most effective when you focus on a single target, because you have enough breathing room to read incoming attacks and decide whether to parry or dodge. Yeah, Nier has a lot of moments where he'll do a cinematic finishing move in boss fights that's very similar to how Platinum titles tend to finish off their bosses, but those were already present in Gestalt. I don't really see the combat as truly character action. Instead, I view it as Gestalt's combat ramped up. The best way I could explain it is how combat feels between the original and remake versions of Destroy All Humans. Although shooting was serviceable in the original game, Psychokinesis wasn't very viable in combat, but shooting in the remake feels smoother, and PK is actually viable in combat because of the tweaks to its handling. It's hard to put down why I don't think Replicant's combat is character action because of this or that thing. 
I don't think its combo pool is the same depth as a true character action game, and it only really gets described as such because the attack animations are really flashy and blend together very smoothly. So that's Replicant's gameplay, but does the story get affected by having a different near in the spotlight? Yes, but also no. From what I've seen, Nier's writing seems perfectly capable of swapping out either Nier and still making sure that the plot remains coherent. Nothing substantial really changes in what characters say or do in front of Nier. Even how Yona behaves works well for Brother Nier. The one noticeable change is that Yona's diary entries that are featured in the loading screens will swap out every instance of Dad and Gestalt with a name that the player entered at the start of the game. It makes sense that this would be the case as there is no honorific in Western culture that anyone uses to refer to their older brother. Whenever Yona does in fact refer to Nier directly, the game cuts off any reference to Dad, and the text box will include the player name for Brother Nier. What really changes between versions is the context we can draw from these exchanges with the younger Nier. Brother Nier comes off way differently in certain moments, and I gotta hand it to the VA for capturing the mood of a young man with a huge chip on his shoulder. Ugh, damn it all! Why does it have to be Yona? Why not me? Of all people, why my only daughter? This is so unfair. Yona hasn't done anything. Why do terrible things keep happening to us? Father Nier is the proto sad dad. He's very matter of fact to the point of being blunt. When he talks to Yona, it's got a very paternalistic air to it, like only he knows what's best for her, even if she thinks otherwise. Yona, I'm sorry, but I have to go. You can tell me when I get back. Oh wait, can you give me a book while you're out? Sure. Now stay here and rest. We can't have your cough coming back. Brother Nier comes off more compassionate, more emotive, but still has the same level of concern over his sister. <sighs> okay. But I'll bring you back a book from the library, okay? I'll see you later. Try and get some rest. He seems like he'd be more capable in social settings than Father Nier. Tell me about this black book. Where's it from? How does it work? What? It's just a song. I don't know what it means. What kind of idiot sings a song without knowing what it means? This kind of idiot? Look, why don't you go to the library and ask Popola? She's smarter than me. Maybe she knows. Popola? All right. So how exactly does this white book save the world? It's just a song, yeah? I don't really know the details. Oh. Aw, don't be sad. Uh, look, why don't you go ask Popola? She's got a big brain, maybe she knows something. That's a good idea. Thanks. But I'm only one man. I'm hard like that. Admittedly, he doesn't carry the same level of authority in his voice when he tells Yona that she needs to stay in bed but that makes him even more interesting, as it's those moments that show how much he has to act like the parent in order to take care of Yona. Yona? Yona, you're supposed to be in bed. See, now your ribbon's all undone. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd see if the library had any books about how to cure my sickness. Yona, look, don't worry. You're gonna be fine. You just need to eat and rest. If you take good care of yourself, you'll get better. You really think so? I know so. Anyway, I've got work to do, so I need you to head home. Deal? Deal. These changes are also evident when Nier talks to other characters. Father Nier comes off deeply respectful towards Popola. Brother Nier is equally respectful, but comes off as a young man with something to prove. I like to think of Father Nier as Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. He's a guy willing to take on any gig and isn't afraid to get hip deep in Shane blood, so long as the pay is good. Brother Nier is more like Tom Holland's Spider-Man where he wants to prove to everyone how capable he is at slaughtering shades. There were some lines in Gestalt that always felt a little awkward for a grown-ass man to say that seem more fit with a younger man's thought process. I haven't made friends with Kaine in Replicant yet, 
but I'm pretty sure hearing a naive twink tell you that you're not friends with him is an easier buy than when a 40-year-old shirtless bear says the same thing. A lot of what I've taken from these differences is based on the voice work for the English dubs. I think the best way to show the contrast between both Nears is the line they say when they accept the book's offer to protect Yuna in the tutorial level. Stay away from my daughter! Stay away from my sister! I'm not here to say that Brother Nier is better than Father Nier. It's a different approach to what is ostensibly the same character. A man desperate to take care of the only family he has in this world. It works from both angles, but each version elicits a different effect based on the respective performances and the shift in family dynamics. I gotta say though, there have been some tweaks to the dialogue that make it so that the game isn't an entire one-to-one -one copy paste job. Die, 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 die! I'm gonna pull out your teeth and cram them up your ass! That woman has a fouler mouth than one would expect. Teeth and cram them up your ass! That woman's mouth is as fierce as her sword work. Let's just focus on defeating this thing. Something else that's really noticeable between versions is that Replicant doesn't even play Kaine's iconic line towards Vice at the beginning of the game's attract screen. Vice! You dumbass! Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Oh, Shadow Lord, I love you, Shadow Lord. Come over here and give Vice a big sloppy kiss, Shadow Lord. Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! That's sad to see, but I bet the reason why this didn't happen was because Squeenix was afraid that having a player new to the series hear a woman nag someone before the game even started would offend a particular subset of the audience. Understandable, but still disappointing. You want to know what change made me burst out laughing? Eh? Huh? Shaman fish? Oh, sure, sure, they're a cinch. Practically jump into the net, they do. But I won't do it for you. So take this pole and go fish one up yourself. Oh, and you can't catch them here at the pier. Go dip your line at the big beach on the west side of town. Squeenix did not want a repeat of events from 11 years ago. Anyways, I don't really have much else to say about Replicant at this point. Hopefully when things settle down and I really have time to cover this game, I can do a thinking bout on it and bring up some substantial comparisons with Gestalt. But having just a small taste of the game, I like what I see. You know what's something I wasn't expecting to appreciate when I first installed the game? It's like just short of 20 gigs of storage. I know it's an upscale job for an 11 year old game, but that was such a pleasant sight to behold after using up 70 gigs for Doom Eternal. Please play Near Replicant, it's a good starting point to the series. If you're really curious about trying the original to get a better appreciation for this re turn to a great masterpiece, then definitely try to snag a copy of Near Gestalt.